So what's up everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today, yes Betty, I know we're gonna move. Today, what we're doing is a bit of an experiment. It's gonna be an experiment over the course of the summer. And what we're doing is right here is one of our more like soggy areas. We've gotten a ton of rain here in East Texas over the last six weeks. I mean, it's just been ridiculous. But with that being said, it is the what? Almost middle of June now. This could be the last of the rain that we get for you know until fall so got to prepare for it to be like that that being said in the summertime the grass slows up it's called the summer slump it slows up a bit to where it just doesn't grow as fast and with our herd we want to be able to keep as much grass on the farm as possible for a whole, whole bunch of different reasons one it helps them two it helps the ground and helps me not be stressed so the experiment that we're doing today is we're going to throw out some what we call sorghum sudan grass seed now this is a special type of grass. This grass can grow up to like 15 feet tall. Yeah, it's nuts. And some people say you can even watch it grow once it gets up a little bit. I mean, it just explodes, it's crazy. And here's the logic behind throwing out this type of seed. One, because in the summer slump, this grass is very heat tolerant and it loves the sun. We're gonna throw it out here and hopefully in the summertime, it's able to grow up and grow crazy. And when we move the cows in here, we can give the rest of the farm a really long break, you know? Cause I mean, it's not, we're not gonna graze it at 15 feet tall, but you know, if we graze it at like 48 inches tall or something, you know, somewhere between 30 and 48 inches, hopefully it'll work. What it'll do is the cows will be able to be in those paddocks, we'll tighten them up real good to where they'll be in those paddocks for a long time. You know, we can put 22 head of cows on almost an eighth of an acre for a day because that's some, that amount of biomass should be able to feed them no problem. Now, if we're able to put them on an eighth of an acre paddock and we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna do three acres like this, that almost, that delays, you know, the rest of the farm about three weeks. That gives it time to recover. That it gives it time to go through the summer slump to where it can grow like it normally does in the springtime to where it gets up to the same kind of height. Now we're putting it, now we're putting it in this field for a specific reason. Again, it's, it, this field here, it just, the way the drainage runs is that it gets kind of wet. It gets pretty wet. What we're going to try and do is put a lot of carbon on it. A lot of carbon. Why? Because the more carbon that you have on the ground, the better the soil that's going to build up. So we're gonna try and grow, you know, you know, 40 inches of carbon on here before we bring the cows in here, which will be in about, uh, probably about 45, 50 days the next time that they're gonna be in this paddock. So if we can get that up, we can put that in the ground. We do that for a couple years. This soil here is gonna be able to soak up a lot more water, which is huge. So this is all in theory and I could be completely wrong with it, but from what I've read, what I've seen, that's what it's used for. There's a guy in, uh, in Australia, his name's Colin Sice. He's using stuff like this. He's completely revolutionizing and really creating pasture crop. What he does is he uses sheep, a lot of sheep. I mean, I'm not gonna get this perfectly correct. You can go look him up for yourself, but this is kind of his idea. What he does is he brings in sheep and he grazes the grass down really hard after he throws out the, the seed. And he, I think he puts it in a no-till drill. So he drills it into the ground and then he has sheep go through and graze off the, the top part. And then in a week or two, he'll bring the sheep back in there and graze the, the same pad down a little bit harder so it stunts the grass a little bit. Now in that time, in that time, he has the wheat, he has the oats, he has the barley all growing up through that same canopy. And then the combine comes through and it just, you know, he's able to harvest, you know, wheat, oat, barley without having to till anything. It's pretty kind of crazy. And at the same time, he's providing food for his sheep, so it's a double kind of harvest. But all the while, he's not tilling up the ground. He's not destroying the ground. He's doing it in a way, go look him up, Colin Sice, S-E-I-S, -E okay? He's from Australia. He does really super long webinars. I've watched a few of them, and it's just, it's super interesting, and he's, what he's doing, if it gets adopted, you know, kind of all over the place, it's gonna change it's a game changer but the main reason we're doing this is hopefully to help get us through the summer you know miss the summer slump and then be able in the fall because this should still be growing ish kind of okay I'll explain that in a second in the fall what it can do is if it's able to slow up the cows a lot more again it'll help us take maybe a few weeks maybe a month off of having to feed hay and if we can take it you know what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be throwing out some fescue seed here after kind of right around the second time that the cows come through kind of all over the farm to where hey you know what 
if this can help us take a month off the back, the, the front end, the fescue seed and you know a, a, a winter uh, cool season mix helps us take a, a month off of feeding hay on the back end, you know what, we might not have to feed hay. That's the whole goal, no feeding hay, but still keeping the stocking density way up. I know some of you disagree with it. It's the way that we're gonna try and do it because you know what, I don't like feeding hay. But this sorghum Sudan grass seed that we're gonna be throwing out, a couple things. It It's recommended that it's um, you know drilled into the ground. Most farmers that do this will go till this up, then go plant it. Obviously not gonna wanna do that here. So we're gonna do something a little bit different. And this is really where the experiment comes into play. This whole thing's an experiment, but this is where the whole experiment comes into play. Because this is a lot wetter, what we're gonna do is we're gonna throw this out. We're gonna throw this out. Then we're just gonna broadcast seed it. Now you can do it. I've read a couple people that do it and have really good success with it, but it's not like, it's not as, but it doesn't have the best results as you go and till it, obviously. Okay, so we're gonna throw this out. Then we're gonna move the cows in here, okay? They wanna go, they, they're annoyed at me, they wanna go. So then we're gonna move the cows in here and because it's wetter, and there's a little bit more give in the soil, their stomping might be able to do the drilling for me. Don't know yet, this is totally an experiment. You know, it was this, these bags of seed here, they're like, I think they're like 26 bucks a piece or something like that so it's not a big you know if it doesn't work uh, big deal it's a good try i don't want to have to go get a you know a tractor and go till it in especially with as wet as the ground is we wouldn't be able to do it anyways so this is either going to probably go either really bad or really good we might have you know 15 foot tall grass or nothing might come up but i think anytime you just throw soil on the ground and you know we're able to make good you know ground to soil contact it's going to grow that's my thinking and the cows stomping it in should be able to should be able to help then also, because we're not going to be uh, drilling it in, oh, look, I got it this time. Because we're not going to be drilling it in, you know, it's recommended about 18 pounds of seed per acre minimum. You can go up to like 40, but we're going to go up 50 pounds per acre. Oh, that way. We're going to go at 50 pounds an acre of this sorghum Sudan grass seed. That way we have a better, you know, it's not gonna be as good if you till it in. But hopefully by us planting more, we can have, you know, kind of similar amount of growth, you know, if you were to till it in. So experiment, we'll see. All right, so this is gonna take a little bit longer than I thought. So I'm not gonna be mean to the cows and have them, you know, have me out here and them bawling at me saying, hey, I wanna move. So I'm just gonna move them and then throw it out with them. So no big deal, let's do it. So what I'm actually gonna do here is I'm actually gonna have the cows graze this down a little bit harder than normal because that way, you know, we have better seed to soil contact. So instead of leaving them in, in here one day like we normally do, we're gonna leave them in here two. That way, you know, they can take a lot of this down, a lot more trampoline, you know, it's, it would be double trampoline, so double the, the seed getting in there. And uh, hopefully this grows up, we'll see. I mean, in theory it works, in reality will it? I don't know, that's what the whole point of conducting an experiment does. <laughs> 
Now, since this is just an experiment, I am just throwing this out by hand with a, you know, a chicken feed bucket. So nothing kind of crazy. Now, if this does work, yeah, I'm gonna go buy a seed spreader, 100%. And go throw that back on the mower or, you know, if something that we can put back on, on the back of an ATV that we get, great, you know, it works. If not, then why am I gonna go spend money on a seed spreader if it doesn't work when I really need to go get, you know, probably go borrow or hire or rent a no-till drill to be able to do this. So, you know what? Just uh, just trying to see. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. So why spend money on something that you don't have to and you have no idea if it's gonna work or not? Now this is only the second time that we're actually throwing out seed here on the farm, okay? Everything else is just planted in. Now, the first time that we threw out seed, it's just only a little bit, like, here, let me show you. Back here is the clover seed that we threw out. We still have about 20 pounds left. So I'm just gonna go through and get a little bit of it and mix it in with this. Because why not? The clover probably won't come up right now, but you know what? The clover seed will be out there. And the reason that I'm throwing this out in front of the cows this time, because the clover seed, I actually threw out behind the cows. Now, did that work? Yeah, we had some, you know, we had some clover grow up. This time, you know, thrown out in front of the cows. Now, then I think because of the trampoline, wow, look at that. Look, I'm turning into Thanos. Cool. No, it didn't work. Okay. Well, um, yeah, ADD. Okay, um, you know, squirrel. So we're throwing it out in front of the cows so they can trample it. Two, they're gonna probably, you know, when they're eating the grass and stuff, they're, they're probably gonna eat some of the seed too, which is not gonna be, you know, terrible for them. Then three, when it comes out, their backside, guess what? They're gonna spread it, you know, wherever they want to, wherever they, you know, decide to take a dump, you know, just cool. And then it's full of fertilizer, which this stuff loves nitrogen, I guess. Absolutely loves nitrogen. And uh, it should grow up even faster and stronger and the cows can spread it for me. So, yeah. Look at that. I didn't know that was going to do that. Shoot, still didn't work. realizing something right now is that even if I wasn't going to be able to take the mower or the ATV out there with the seed spreader wouldn't be able to do it why because it's so wet it's so I mean just out there we've had so much rain it's so wet that I'm even like I'm almost like okay maybe it's too much of the you know the pugging that near the this tra trampling that the cows are going to do over there because I mean I don't know how many inches of rain that we got some people trust the rain gauges that you know the weather people put out I don't, I trust what, what, what falls in our buckets, what falls in our wagons, what falls in whatever that, you know, shows that. Anyways, whatever. I don't know how much rain we've, we've gotten, but it's been way too much. So yeah, this is, so this is a, a good thing that I'm throwing it out like this. And like I said, just to see, just to see what happens. You know, as I'm throwing this out, having a little bit of an idea, what I'm doing is anytime we see, cause sometimes, you know, that we have spots of low fertility and that's where broom sedge will grow up. Where we see like where broom sedge is starting to grow up, taking so, just a kind of a bigger handful and throwing it right there on it to see, okay, can this grow where broom sedge grows? And then if it does, can it outcompete the broom sedge to where, you know what? It outgrows it, shades it out, and the broom sedge is gone. Maybe. Again, these are just theories, these are just ideas, but it should, you know, in my head it works. That'd be a great way to one, you know, get rid of the broom sedge. That keeps it from spreading this year. And then where this, you know, sorghum Sudan grass, which you can go pff, to the moon, guess what? That's gonna, when it gets chopped off or when it gets eaten, this fertility that's gonna be left there is gonna be ridiculous to where, okay, maybe the broom sedge doesn't grow back. Another thought. All right, that is 50 pounds. That is 50 pounds of jackpot hybrid sorghum Sudan, sorghum Sudan grass seed on this one acre paddock. So we're gonna see how this turns out. Now, 
couple notes. If you're gonna try something like this, okay? Again, this is totally experiment, but there's some stuff that we do know and there's stuff that is right on the packaging. Don't feed this to horses. Why? Because it could kill them. You gotta, I'm gonna check before this grows back up and see if uh, one, the llamas can eat it. I'm sure they can. I'm like 99% sure they can, but I just wanna make sure. Um, now the reasons why that this, you know, you know, if this is the greatest grass in the world, it's growing up 15 feet, sequestering so much carbon. Why isn't this being used all over the place? Well, big reason is that this, uh, this sorghum Sudan grass, as soon as it frosts, as soon as it's the first killing frost, they can't touch it anymore. The cows, the, no animal can touch it. It needs to be mowed down completely. It needs to be gone. Why is that? Because there's something called prusic acid. It says it right here. Yeah. It says it right here on the thing, prusic acid poisoning. Oh. Now, it's only really released when, um, when the, um, the first frost hits. So as soon as the first frost hits, it's got to go. So what I'm going to do is we're going to mark this paddock. We know which one it is. Uh, the other two paddocks that we're going to be putting it in, we know which one those are. As soon as the frost is that morning, I'm out here and I'm mowing. I'm mowing this completely down. We're going to make sure we're going to watch the weather. You know, that's not until probably October, hopefully November ish, late November. That'd be great. Um, that way we can get, you know, three, four, maybe even five, uh, grazings out of this, at least two for sure. But, um, you gotta watch that. You gotta watch it. They can't have it anymore. Now, could we cut this for, uh, you know, you know, hay? Could we cut this for baleage, silage? Yeah, we can, but it's not. I think, you know, we can just take the animals to the food rather than the food to the animals. It just works out a lot better. Why? Because they move on their own. It's a lot less work. So that's why in a you know regular open grazing setup. This won't work because as soon as that, that first frost hits, it's got to go. And then two, it needs some time for it to get going. It needs some time for it to go going. So if you just, you know, turn your cows out and, you know, the grass grows up this much, they're going to chomp it right off and then you don't get all the benefits. So this right here, this should work. Hopefully it works. If it works, it's kind of a game changer because for a couple of reasons, again, like, you know, one to, you know, we're doing this in the wet area to be able to put a bunch of carbon here to help build that soil up to where it doesn't, you know, it's able to soak up the water better because I mean, it's it's sloshy over there. It's pretty sloshy. Two, this could really help with our hay situation. This could really help get us through the winter. This could really help, in, especially in the summertime, help us stockpile the rest of the farm because, you know, we're able to, you know, if this is going way up here, you know, the cows only need an eighth of an acre a day to, you know, be able to sustain themselves. So it lets the rest of the farm rest. Three, that's what I was just thinking about right now, what I told you about. Okay, can this suppress weeds? I don't know, I don't know. That's a, that's a good question, it's gonna be really cool to find out. And four, it'd be really, really pretty cool to say, hey, look at my grass, it's, you know, twice as tall as I am. That'd be pretty cool, you know? And just kinda cool to say, and hey, taking a lot of more carbon out of the air, putting it into the ground where it's supposed to be, and it's just benefiting everybody. So hopefully this works. If you want to follow along and see if it does work, hit that subscribe button down below, ring the notification bell so you get notified when we put up new videos. Hit the like button because it really does help with the YouTube algorithm. And now I'm going to go do more, do two more acres of this because, because you know, throwing out seed can only be as exciting as you know I can make it. So not going to take you guys through that. We're going to put it in another low area, and then an area where uh, we mowed down just you know 13 foot tall weeds last year. Um, you know where a lot where the blackberries and rose bushes were so hopefully this adds a lot more carbon there because the, the rose bushes are starting to come back but a little bit the blackberries a little bit not you know to the extent it was you know just a you know a couple feet but the cows between the cows the llamas the llamas especially eating it down and then throwing a lot of this on there could be a big deal could work really well for us so with that we'll see you next time all right see ya bye i better not uh get pulled over right now because they're gonna think that i robbed the bank and did an exploding pack look at that it's nuts.